Happy December, everyone. My name is Chad Lemon. Welcome back to the channel. I did a video on my dad's EDC back in March of this year, and it really uh, got a lot of views, got a lot of great, unbelievably wonderful comments. And again, thank you so much for those comments. It has been incredible. Um, but I recently thought about, man, those old EDC videos are doing really well. And so I wanted to highlight uh, my grandfather's World War II EDC. I have a lot of objects, a lot of things that he carried with him uh, when he fought in World War II. My grandfather died, I remember the day, March 14th, 1997. Uh, I was 16 years old. And I remember sitting at my kitchen table and my mom calling me from the hospital and saying that he had passed. Uh, my grandfather was a veteran of World War II. He fought in 1944 and 45 in Europe, fought at Utah Beach. Um, he wasn't at D-Day necessarily. He was at D-Day plus two. They had that support group come in behind them, but he fought in France and uh, he had three, and I'm not joking, three Purple Hearts. So today we're going to look at some of his World War II EDC, some of the stuff that he carried while he was over there uh, in the serving in the United States Army, but also some of the things that he came back to Alabama, North Alabama, and was a farmer for a long, long time. He owned a lot of land out in Hazel Green, Alabama, and uh, some of the things he carried then as well. So let's uh, let's take a look at this. I hope you enjoy it. So these are some of my most treasured items that I have from my grandfather, and this is some of the stuff that he carried in the 1940s in World War II, some of the stuff from his time in the Army and all sorts of different things. We've got a, a leather, almost kind of leather thing that we'll go through here in a minute, but I just want to go through this box first. So this is a patch that he would have worn on his shoulder for the 95th Infantry Division. You see the 9 and the V, that's the 95th Infantry Division. And they were responsible for the liberation of a little town in France called Metz or Meats. And uh, amazing story there. Uh, you should go look it up online. I'm not entirely sure that my grandfather was a part of that. Um, but his unit was during the time that he would have been in that unit. So I would imagine that he was part of that, although he never really talked about his military service all that much. But I was incredibly proud. He, of course, uh, fought in France in World War II. He had a couple of, uh, I think, at least two Purple Hearts, uh, and my mother has those medals uh, as well. And so, of course, you got the unit patches, which would have been worn on the shoulder. And then, of course, what would be complete without a handkerchief? And this handkerchief has been used and washed so many times, so many times. I could, my grandfather used these religiously uh, during his time. And so this is so nice and soft and I haven't even uh, brought myself to be able to use it myself. So um, of course you got a handkerchief. They didn't have Mighty Hanks back then. So got to deal with some of that kind of stuff. Um, this is actually, and I know you're probably wondering what this is, but this is a shaving kit. Um, if you slide off the top, and it's difficult to get off, but if you slide off the top, it's just a plastic. You got your razor right here, you got your handle, and you would assemble that together for uh, a shaving kit. And this would have been probably, uh, I don't know if this was issued to him in the, in the Army, but I would imagine that it was. And so you got all sorts of different details there with who made it and made by PAL here in um, the USA. And uh, it's got the inscription star on the side of it. It's just a nice little um, case. I, I think that's I think that's pretty cool. Um, I think that's really neat how they package stuff so small like that. Of course, then we get into some of the more um, eccentric stuff. Here is an old watch that has a stretchy band on it that I've never seen before. Look at that. Look at the way that band stretches there. That's it's really neat. It's kind of metal-ish, but it's got this yellowed face to it as well. And so he's also got another watch on here. I remember him wearing this watch for ages and ages. This was the generation that just, you bought one thing and you wore it your entire life. I mean, greatest generation, man. I'm, that's, that's all you got to say. So 
Again, this was one of those just regular old watches that he just wore. I remember him wearing it all the time. And of course you can see some corrosion here because I haven't really cleaned all this up necessarily. But um, he wore this as long as I knew him. And I knew him for at least uh, 17 years of my life. So going through some of that stuff, and I know what you're itching to get to, but he also carried a pocket watch around. And again, if you know anything about any of these items, um, I didn't do any research or necessarily on looking at what these uh, items are. I know what some of them are by default, uh, but I don't know what most of them are. So if you know, sound off in the comments. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to, to um, hear about some of the different things that you know about some of these items. And so again, this one says, I think it says Orlin or green, maybe. I don't even really know, but it's a yellowed face right here. And uh, I haven't wound this watch. I don't know if it actually works or not, but um, it's really cool. It's just got solid gold on the other side. I, I imagine it's not gold. It's probably brass or, or some other type of polished metal. Um, my grandfather was never one for precious um, things like that. Uh, got a couple of different knives right here. I know that's probably what you came for. And uh, here is one that is very similar to just a regular old case knife. And again, these were long rusted uh, before I got a hold of them. So some of them you can barely get open, but I remember him carrying this. Uh, and then I've got a broken off blade right here. Uh, this is just an amazing uh, little piece. I'm not even sure what, what brand it is. It's, it's worn so smoothly right there that, that he used it so much. Got a little rust on it there. Um, but then this one right here looked to be a precursor of like Swiss Army knives. Um, this was just a piece that had a really good keychain kind of loop here on it. And it's got really cool things, but it's really rusty. You can barely got to pull these things out and it's very kind of rusted and it's got a chipped blade and all sorts of stuff on it. But really, really neat kind of pocket knife, a multi-tool kind of pocket knife and everything. I can't pull the other ones out because I don't have really good fingernails necessarily, but... Uh, really cool looking and um, again a little rust on it but I can't find a brand on this I can't find a brand to say you know what what kind it is and so again this was the time where stuff wasn't really branded necessarily we're talking about this was in the early 1940s to 50s here I remember him using this pipe um, this has a it's a Hessen guard pipe it says on it and I remember him putting tobacco in this and I remember him smoking it. He was an avid smoker. He, he liked his tobacco. And uh, really, just, I mean, just look at the, look at how that stuff, maybe Milano, can't really see in there, but I'll give you a good look about it. Again, he had that as long as I knew him. Um, and I was, I was born in 1980 and he died in 1997. And so he had it as long as I knew him. Let's get into some of the, well, before we get into the military stuff, let's get into some of the, the precious things here. Um, you know, my grandfather was never, he wasn't real vocal about stuff as that generation was. They weren't, they didn't talk about their exploits. They didn't share stuff on social media and things like that. Of course, they didn't have that. But this right here, um, you could tell this was, this was something that I know that he wore um, at Utah Beach. Um, he wore this in, in when he was fighting and he had married my grandmother and this has a p tiny picture of my grandmother in it. Uh, just amazing. Um, my grandmother, um, they got married shortly before he went off to war and um, just amazing. So it's amazing that photo's still intact in there and uh, of course you can see this is well worn. Very cool stuff. And then of course you've got, I don't know what this key is to, but, a, but it has Ford on it. So apparently it's to a pickup truck, probably his pickup truck. He had a Ford pickup truck for a long, long time. And of course a pair of nail clippers, but then it says uh, something like a key to my heart. And I, I would imagine that's from my grandmother. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that I think it is. It's, a, it's amazing to just see these kinds of things. Um, then we've got some, some military specific things here. Oh, I've got a sharpening stone. Uh, this is a sharpening stone and a leather, obviously this was used quite a bit. And this would have been used probably for his razor, oh, excuse me. This would have probably been used for his razor uh, that he had, uh, maybe even um, sharpening a bayonet, who knows, uh, in those days. He would have carried uh, an M1 Garand, I know, in, um, in the war. 
and uh, that's the kind of thing. But this sharpening stone has been used uh, quite a bit. And uh, I mean, if it's not a sharpening stone, let me know what you think it is. Um, pretty sure it's a sharpening stone and it's been used quite thoroughly. But uh, again, just let me know what you think about that. Got some uh, different little things and there's different little boxes in here. We won't go through all of this. By the way, I have no idea what this is. This is a chain that has these two like piston type things on the end with like really kind of, I don't really even know what this is. Just right. Hmm. Don't know what it is. Have no clue. But uh, if you got a, if you got a clue what these things are, um, give me a sound sound off in the comments. Let me know. Of course, got a couple of rounds. This would be your standard uh, five five six or no seven point six two rounds uh, right here. These are just standard seven point six two rounds. I would imagine that these were from the war. Um, don't know why he would keep rounds around, but anyway. Some of these slugs right here, some of these different things right here. These just look like parts of bullets. They're not even, they're the, probably the projectile part of the bullet. And so again, just amazing to kind of look at and see these different types of rounds. I'm really not sure what that one is at all. It's very heavy though, very heavy. Just cool stuff right there. He's got a little can that looks like it was made for film and it's a little rusted to get open, but if you open it, all he's got, and it's not very exciting. It's not very exciting. Just a bunch of buttons and things like that. You know, you couldn't just go buy new stuff all the time, especially in the war, and um, he had to replace his own buttons sometimes. You had to learn how to sew in the army back in those days, and you had to learn how to sew some buttons back on some stuff, and they didn't have zippers, didn't have Velcro, and so Im imagine those types of things. This is a medal that he received. I'm not sure which medal this is. The, the army has changed some of their medals. And of course this medal would go along with this ribbon. I believe this is the National Defense Medal. Uh, but he, whatever he's got right here, he's got three stars on. So that means he got it three times at least. Uh, and again, correct me if I'm wrong on that. This is the marksmanship badge that every person who did um, army marksmanship training would have um, they would have gotten, they would have been able to wear on their dress uniform as well. So my, my grandfather knew how to shoot, apparently. I knew that already, but uh, apparently he knew how to shoot in the Marines too. So he was from North, or not the Marines, excuse me. I was in the Marines, he was in the Army. And so when we talk about that, um, I would imagine that being from North Alabama, he was a boy that knew how to shoot, uh, born in 1921. But at the same time, uh, the Army confirmed that probably for him. So various different medals that he had that he would have worn on his army uniform. And then of course we've got, of course, another medal with three stars on it. Um, a dice, I would imagine that he played games and cards and different things like that with his fellas and his fellow soldiers. And so here's just a, a die that was in there and pretty interesting. So a couple more rounds in here couple of different documents that I've kept and I don't really remember these but these this was like a uh, and this is not army related necessarily this is more um, related to what he had but he made um, he made all sorts of different notes on some things and I loved to keep those and uh, this is like a financial statement of sorts he was a farmer in North Alabama owned a owned a farm out in Hazel Green Alabama I grew up not too far away from there and uh, He's got the different variety of seed and ready mixed fertilizer and all sorts of different stuff on here. Pounds of seed cotton. Cotton, of course, is big. North Alabama still very much is. Uh, but that's just a neat document to look at and to have. And he would have carried that around with him. Hey, I've got some business cards from his sharpening shop. He owned a sharpening shop where he sharpened uh, saws and blades and knives and all sorts of stuff. Um, if I would have been in, in, into knives and different EDC as much as I am now back then, I would have loved to have seen some of the equipment that he had in his shop. And uh, like I said, he died when I was about 16 years old. And uh, when I was 16, didn't care much about anything but girls. So I'm just gonna be honest there. But again, that's really cool. Can you start up? That's where my grandma lived. That house is no longer there. So don't, you know, you can look it up and stuff, but don't try to work it, look it up. Now, this wouldn't have been a part of his EDC, but I really think that this is just interesting to uh, include. This is a um, Ford truck 1968 operator's manual, and I just love looking through some of this. You've got the little graphics and stuff in there. Um, 
how to put it in neutral and all sorts of different stuff and different maintenance. This was, again, this is a different generation where they maintained and fixed things instead of just replacing things all the time. Instead of just buying new stuff, they would, they would keep one thing for a long, long time. I remember riding in this truck with my grandfather when I was a little boy. So he kept it from 1968, at least, he kept it for a long, long time. And so again, here's one last little document that we'll look at before we get to the, the thing right here. And again, this was just something that he kept notes on. Lime, I just love that, that kind of stuff, seeing his handwriting, that's just neat. One of the coolest things I have is this wallet that he, I don't know if he carried it necessarily with him all the time, but he had a bunch of different things in here. Of course, there's more, a couple more different patches. Of course, the 95th Infantry Division um, for a while. And I'll just add those to the pile here. But then he had, uh, of course, this is his um, dog tags. And he's long gone, so don't even worry about his Social Security number or service number. Um, he's been gone for, for uh, almost 25 years now. But this was one of his dog tags. So if anybody knows, they, they, put, this, they put this notch right here. And it was kind of kind of brutal but what they would do is that they would put it to my understanding they would put it in your teeth and then they would kick your mouth shut and it would lodge up there so they would know exactly um, who you were be, be able to identify you they couldn't identify by dna back in those days um, they couldn't identify by anything else and so this was really what they had to to go by and so again there's his um, dog tag right there nothing else in here uh, nothing else, I believe, in this pocket, and he had something. This is a really neat little leather satchel. It's kind of beat up. Of course, it's 70, almost 80 years old now, uh, but it's really kind of, it's a little bit stiff, and I don't know if it's actual leather or if it's something else, but it feels, it feels kind of like it was, but it's really neat. So get into here, there's some documents, but there's some of this, and again, I shared this on a, um, I shared this on a YouTube short uh, just a couple of days ago, but, um, We'll talk about that in a minute. But this is some of the German money that I guess he found in the war. Um, these are German marks, and I have looked up some of these, and they're not they're not worth millions of dollars or anything. They're not worth even thousands of dollars. But it, having these are just incredible. Look at the artwork on these, and just the the way that they were done. Of course, this is a five thousand uh, Reutsch Bank note, um, and. Uh, you see Reich on there, as in German Reich there. And again, if you've got any insight into these items, I would love uh, to see it. Look at, look at how wonderful this is. Look at these Reich Bank, Reich Bank note. Berlin, uh, 21st April, 1910. Uh, just incredible artwork on these. I love the, um, look at this, look at this. That was kind of this, the symbol of the German people right here, this kind of eagle bird thing. If you kind of, uh, it's kind of their, I don't know, it's kind of one of their national identities kind of things. So anyway, you've got uh, all these bills right here. Very cool to see this paper money and just, just a piece of history right here, piece of history. Last thing I'm gonna share is this, um, this really cool little thing that they had, a soldier's individual pay record. Of course, they didn't have direct deposit back then. They didn't have all any sorts of electronic transfer. Uh, but look at what he got paid. If you can zoom in on that, he got paid uh, additional pay for a combat infantry badge. Um, his wife is Miss Mary Emma Kennedy. Um, all sorts of different things. Hazel Green, Alabama, 26 June, 1944. Um, that means he would have been in right after. So he marked, I love this right here, how he marked out private and he, he was private, private first, first class. class. I'm gonna let, let you make sure I know that, private first class. class. Uh, but he had one and nine, um, nine twelve, so one and three quarters years of service. And of course his serial number there. Uh, but look at look at these things, his insurance is $10,000, 10,000. Um, I remember when I was in the military several years ago, I got $250,000. It was called SGLI. Um, and this allotment's $22, amount in class, 375 pay, pay reservation. Look at, look at those numbers. That's just, that, that, those numbers just amazing to me. But um, again, you've got, um, you've got different stuff right here. And this was a war department, that's back when they called it the war department. 
I just think this is just incredible stuff. So thank you so much for tuning in today. Of course, we're filming from my garage here. That's where I'm trying to do some top down shots of some of this stuff. Thank you so much for your time and attention. If you like this video, please make sure to like and of course subscribe. There's going to be a lot more cool uh, EDC stuff coming. Don't always do old EDC stuff like this, so don't think this is what my channel is all about. But I was able to do something on my dad as well as my granddad here. And so I think y'all really dug that and really like to share it. So appreciate you letting me share that with you. And again, I appreciate your comments, appreciate your likes and your subs. Thank you so much. Go out and have a great week.